Hey, welcome back to the show. I did a room tour a little while back and we just went around the room and spoke about all the bits of gear, but there was so much that I missed and a lot of you just really want me to come back and fix that up. But uh, I guess here we are and I'll just try and complete it this time. The amp rack that I made is just constantly evolving. I just keep changing things around. I've got these single pedal holders now, which I made. And again, it's just these little clips and I designed the amp rack that way, just with those quarter turn little Zuz receptacles. You find them on a lot of the audio gear and all the touring rigs, but it makes it easy just when you have little pedal ideas and you just want to attach things and take things off and fit different pedals just to make things really work for the show. But it's practical in its own way as well. And I guess next was just an idea that I had, and this is just a piece of aluminium that I put Velcro on the front of, and you can utilize it with your guitar cabinet. And it just slides on like so, center it in the middle, and you can just put your guitar head on top of that I just thought it was a really simple and practical way just to be able to mount your pedals, especially when you've got EQs and things that you don't want to keep changing. You don't want to turn on and off or kick with your foot and make adjustments to the dials. This way, it's just all there. Sort of set and forget. It looks great, but uh, just an idea for some of you. And then we get up to my guitars. I'm not sure exactly even how I missed this last time. So this whole guitar from the very start, this is my own branded Lamb guitar. It's used in loads of videos and it sounds really good, but I went onto all the chips and forums and all the Chinese builders that are out there and I really had to just research who is a credible builder in China. They all claim to be and they all say that they're all builders, but I know there's only a couple out there that actually do a good job and the rest were total rip-offs. But what I did, I researched exactly where like the Epiphone factory is in China and I looked around there on AliExpress and a lot of the forums just to see what builders claim to be in the same sort of area. And I was really hoping that a builder that's part of that Epiphone factory would just be doing cashies on the weekend. And that was my thinking to find a builder that would actually do a good job and have a little bit of pride in what they do and not just try and punch out a pallet of them. And as for the company that I actually use, I honestly cannot remember that. Uh, I vaguely remember being some emerald, but but the way that it started for the design, I just got on Photoshop, had like an ESP Eclipse that I modeled it off and, and I just made little changes, like tried to create my own headstock shape, just my own sort of logo on the headstock and the little lamb's head. But originally I wanted to be called Ram Guitars, like for rock and metal, and that's where the Ram's head sort of came from. But that idea had been taken by someone and it didn't really matter anyway, but they did a really good job building it. I designed all the plans on the Photoshop, sent them back and forth, had so many questions and so many write-ups about like the exact for the bone nut and then the maple neck on the back and the feel of that that I wanted. I wanted something that was, I wanted a really beefy sort of neck knowing that it's Chinese. I'm not sure of the quality of the woods that they use, but if it is a really beefy rock maple neck, it's never going to move or warp or twist or anything like that. It's just gonna be really stable. And it has been, it just stays in tune perfectly and it's really heavy and solid, but it's what I wanted. And at the time I was selling them for $5.99, they would come to my door. I think I was paying about $330 or $350 for them. And they'd come to my door and I would source and buy the hardware, I'd buy the EMGs, they were costing about $100. And I was just redoing all the hardware and setting them up. So I wasn't really making money at all on them, but. I just wanted to be able to give some guitar players a really decent guitar for value for money. And um, I just got too busy, the Aussie dollar dropped. I wasn't making any money. And so sadly the project just had to end, but this is all I've got left from it. It's just the one guitar. I couldn't unsell this guitar, it had a few errors. It's got a little gap just under the pickup there where they just routed the hole and the cavity too big. One of the dots is just not perfect, but I did find going through the Chinese builders that every single time a guitar came to me, there was some tiny issue, whether it be a paint blemish or there were little tiny borer holes or it was just something that I found every single guitar that came. And I was just getting them one or two at a time at the start. I didn't feel confident just getting an entire pellet load of them in case the issue was with them all. I wanted to try and just iron out all the QC issues with them and when they got a few right that then I'd go ahead and buy like a whole pallet load of them, but we never got that far and it just seemed to die, but it was just still a really cool project. And, um, but I am sorry, I'm sure a few of you are gonna say who was the builder or they wanna know just for your own guitars. I honestly cannot remember. 
And I ended up just deleting everything that I had on them because they just kept on bombarding me after a few months when I stopped placing all the orders and it just it just became relentless. I deleted it and then uh, I just don't know who they are anymore. So I am sorry. Righto, and next we've got the Jackson Dominion Mark Morton Pro Model. And this is just such a really cool, classy guitar. I bought it brand new back in 2009. Huge Lamb of God fan. I thought this was the coolest of all the Mark Morton Pro Models. It was just before he released the D2 model where they all came out in this same riverbed ebony. But I still think it's a fantastic color. That whole riverbed ebony just sort of seems to pop it. Looks really great with the chrome hardware and it's got the single call, like the pickup switching and really cool guitar, chambered hollow body. Um, the only thing I find when I've got it tuned up and it sounds like a racing car and all set up playing beautifully, it is susceptible to different climate and different temperatures and the neck will just change ever so slightly. It's got the spurts or locking tuners and it really is just a classy guitar. It's one of the last that they did in the factory before they closed it and uh, it's a great sounding guitar. It's got the Bill Kelly hair, the Mojo Tone pickups in it, and they're really fat and meaty. Because it is chambered, it's got a very bright sort of sound to it. It's not rich and deep and full. It's a lot brighter, and it really, it's, it's fantastic for a lot of detuning and stays bright and really crisp. This is the second lot of frets. I've actually had to replace all the frets. They were mediums when it came out, and I just wore them down too fast. I absolutely played the crap out of this guitar and i replaced them with jumbos or the super jumbo frets i much prefer those it feels a lot nicer when you slide and things but really cool guitar we'll get on to the next one and next we get the jackson sand dimis this is the adrian smith model this isn't the actual usa version it's i think it's indonesian but uh look it's a really cool guitar it's got a really heavy solid body to it it's uh, a lot heavier than the Charvel, and it's got a much better tone, I think. It's just a really nice tone that comes out of this. It, it sustains really well. It's not a quarter saw neck. It's just a slab cut maple neck, but the only thing that's a little bit annoying with these is you have to take the pick guard off to make any truss rod adjustments. And this is the only guitar that I have that actually has 9 to 46 gauge strings. Everything else in the collection has the String Joy 10 to 52 strings, and these are really cool. I've been really impressed with these strings. I've been using them a few months now. I really like the way that they balance out all the strings on the fretboard. It's uh, not the standard sort of gauge that you expect. Usually with a 10 to 52, you've got like the 52 and a 42, so forth. But in this set, they've got a, like a 135 on the B string and a 40 there on the A string. And I think it just makes a lot more even tension across the strings. I really enjoy playing them. They last a long time. And you can get on their website and order yourself your own specific string choice that's tailored exactly to how you want, whether you want a 9 to 52 or a, like an 11 to 50, it doesn't really matter. They'll just make them up for you at no extra charge. These guys just make strings. It's all they do. It's a fantastic company and I stand behind them 100%. But, uh, but anyway, back to the San Dimas. It's a really cool guitar. I bought it back in 2013 or so and... It's done loads of Maiden covers for me. It stays in tune really well. It never really changes seasonally or anything like that. I did upgrade all the pickups for a while there. I had it going HSH with a liquefier on the neck. I can't remember what the single coil was with a Demazio D100 in the bridge. Um, the original stock pickup that came with it, it was just a Jackson branded pickup that was modeled off the Jackson D, uh, the Demazio D100, sorry, the Super Distortion. And it was actually a really cool pickup and it wasn't far off the D100 that's in here now. If I knew it was so close, I would never have done the upgrade to start with. But I did configure it back to the HSS, like the stock configuration that it came in for the San Dimas. But the problem I found with HSS guitars is if you have a 500k pot, the humbucker sounds fantastic, but the single coils are just far too bright and too punchy. They really need the 250k pot and the tone just to sort of wind them back and make them sound all nice and smoky. But if you do that in turn and just have 250k pots, the humbucker then fails and just sounds really dark and muddy. But I just remembered what I did here and I put a five-way super switch in just so in different intervals it can split out and single coil the humbucker on the back just to get some really cool strat tones. But when it was set to full throttle just on the humbucker, I had it on the switch that it bypasses the tone pot altogether that is a 250k tone pot. 
And when it's in that back position, it bypasses that pot and all you utilize is the volume then. And so you get the full output of the D100. It might be common sense to a lot of you and it might be in a lot of guitars, but I'd never really seen that before. And I, th I just thought it was really cool that you can actually do that. So you can get the 250K pots going on for the single calls. And when the, even the humbucker has been split, it's in 250K. But, but when you want just the humbucker, there's no tone actually working on it and you get the full output of it. So it's just a really cool guitar. Enjoy playing with it. I love strats in the way that you can just pull off the pick guards, do whatever modifications you want. You can wire them how you want. You can change all the pickup configs and, and they're just a really cool guitar for those that like to tinker and I really can't help myself. I'm, I'm always fiddling around and mucking around with different things, but I think that's pretty much everything now I've covered. If there's anything else at all in this room that I haven't covered that you'd like me to talk about, I'll just try and get it in a different video, but until then guys, take care. Bye-bye.